Okay, guys, check this shit out. One day I was with my friend and I was like, hey, I need to play Anna to this part that the game bugged for me. And I found out this. Anna has made an extended edition of their game. And I was so curious by the time I was playing with my friend that what the fuck is this? So I clicked the extended edition, I played it to one freaking part until I couldn't play no more because I started screaming in the middle of the daylight. This g game has gone just over the top, really scary. Just... and the whole puzzles are changed. So I'm going to start this extended edition and I will... I can play this normal Anna to the end but I still need to play the beginning to the point because I started playing this. Glitch, click it! Ooh, Calypso and Dream Painters! Cat, just sh chill. This first episode is going to be the calming beginning, um, but the second episode is probably going to be really bad because I know I'm going to go into that room where shit is going to go to hell, oh god. I don't want to see that thing again, but I need to because I really want you to experience this game and I want to play it because I'm curious. So let's start a new game. Thank you. And a lot of things has changed. I'm going to go to options when I get there and put the hints on, even though they didn't help me. I still recall the ecstasy of the sun piercing through the trees. While our hours passed along with the chanting of the wind blowing across the mountains. I hope that I have forgotten you forever and ever. Oh, Anna, my mom. You look creepy as fuck. You fucking witch. Here we are. Do you remember this place? Yeah, it has changed. It's, it's a lot of... This is... Oh, yeah. Uh, you can read those. What he's reading because I missed it. How did I end up in here anyway? Look at... They have added butterflies. As if I walked to here in trance. And there's mountains. I must figure out why I keep dreaming about her. I'm in dire need of answers. Yep. Oh. Yes. 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 Just let me do this shit. Oh yeah, it has changed um, the controls to dirty object. It's probably me. I'm just kidding, I'm hell of a clean person. The inventory has changed to dirty object. I've cleaned it with water, and it looks like it's some piece of cheer. How could it if I wouldn't have burned with those rocks? I don't know, man. Probably Anna. Let's take this shit with us. Oh, I love how smooth this game is to play, even though I'm recording. Let's take that pebble. Um, there is a door. It's closed. Maybe it's possible to open from the other side. Oh, shit. Let's take that. Oh, I've already got one. Oh, it's really great that they have, like, made... Let's see. Crouch. That you cannot take so much shit with you. You can just only have one. Let's open this one. Done. I cut the rope. I'll bring it with me. Let's open this shit. Uh, mm, 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 no. Thank you. There is a cracked wall. No way I can make it with my bare hands. Well, good luck for you. I have a bevel. I have... I have a... I have... I have... Better, 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 okay. I was wrong. Um... I've played this game already through cracked wall. Come on, man. But I can 
don't seem to remember what to do. Awesome. Well, let's check out this place. There is a eye shaped knot. A magnificent carving. Despite its simplicity, the etching was masterfully carved. There's something inside. Oh yeah, I totally forgot. I forgot. Oh, get, let me out of here. Thank you. We need to use this pebble. Can can someone press play to the music, please? No? Okay. I really like the music. Let's take the... Oh, I can't reach it. Well, we have this stick. Got it! Hallelujah. Um, let's take, we have the candy. Let's take some water. Thank you. See, there is no the thing anymore, which was in the first place. Um, so all, all of this has changed, and I think that is pretty damn cool. Um, I don't know what to do now. I I seem to have forgotten what to do. Um, probably let's combine these. They fit together perfectly, but I need something to hook them up. Well, let's use the little string. No, little string. Oh, okay, let it go. Little string to the broken gear. The gear has been fixed now. Um, can I... Where's my bevel? Oh. Well. 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 What do you know? What was this sound? It was probably me. But I'll save the options. Um, ma, 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 da, da, da. Black here, time. Can't. Uh, I have changed it already. Complete. So I'm simple. I don't know. I'm a bit of a simple person. Let's crouch the fuck down and flame that bitch. There. What now? Well, we have the gear. Oh, we have. We thank you. It should work now. And this is how we get the um, door open. But what I've seen in my bag is that I have this journal and I really want to read it. So I am going to read it because well what the how how did I get there? There is a notebook. So I'm going to read this. I'm really sorry if you're not in this interested in this lore, but I am. I want to read this. Let's take a sip before the hard work. Weird rock mounts and mechanisms on the wall. Now I'm sure this house has secrets to conceal. It's no longer just a simple inkling. What the? How did I end up in here? This is the soul mill I keep seeing in my dreams, but I don't understand. Am I awake or still asleep? In my dreams, I'm always outside the fence, but not this time. I want to find out what's hidden there. Yeah, I somehow feel that in that house, I will find the answers to all my questions, and maybe her too. I can't sleep. I've got a splitting headache. I'm riding it just so I can survive through the discomfort. Anesthetics have been useless so far. The few moments of relief are always followed by sharp stabs of agony. While in bed, I roll my head, trying to find a position that it might stop or mitigate the pain, yet it's still all being. I didn't see that arrow. <laughs> it's all been hopeless. <laughs> when I close my eyes, it sounds like I hear the noise of boomers caressed by the wind as they were composing a symphony using my sir bones. It looks like I can see images from that scene, the sky and the mountains. Oddly enough, my vision is blurred, despite the fact 
I don't recognize the place. I have the feeling I've already been there. This migraine just keeps playing the tricks on me. I despise the mountains and I would never wish to go there. The few times I've gone up to the mountains, I didn't stay more than a single day. Never ventured into the woods, nor gone on hiking trails. I must raise my head up on a pillow, I'm feeling faint from the pain. Today's lesson shocked them. When I told them how it was common for a knight in the Middle Ages to rape poor country women, they would happen to meet walking alone on the streets. Some of them stared at me. The girls in particular seemed aghast and disturbed, as if I were telling them a fictional story. Nevertheless, there is men an old song, usually not to be found in anthology school books, extolling this practice and even glorifying rape as a privilege of knighthood towards women of subordinate classes. In Samakil, knights would romantically kneel before damsels and unleash themselves among young shepherdesses. I was worse still when I told them that in some alpine communities rape was given a means to a marriage. Beyond any formality, the raped woman was bound to become the pride of her abuser. Life wasn't easy back then, and there wasn't much time for courtship. Such behavior may seem revolting nowadays, viewing it from a modern, modern, modern perspective. Yet what's ever even more terrifying is how human beings have forgotten the memory of those perpetrated horrors and how they tend to willingly ignore them when put before their very eyes. I have a reading problem, apparently. Struggling with feelings of disgust caused by the topic of said lesson I taught yesterday, some students have even begun giving me the title of Professor Pervert. If that bloody headache hadn't returned, I'd have even laughed at such a stupid and unimaginative nickname. So we're a teacher. Today something peculiar happened. While I was searching for some stuff, just some souvenirs I guess, amid, of, amid a mess of old cardboard boxes in the cellar, I noticed an unfamiliar box half buried among the others. I often go down to the basement, but I had never noticed this one before. I didn't even recognize it. Therefore, I immediately decided to find out what was inside. Reaching it wasn't an easy task. I had to move a couple of big boxes full of ethnic junk to clear my way through. Why do I keep all this garbage? But eventually, I managed to take it out of that heap. I found some photos inside. They had been placed in a makeshift envelope made out of sheets of manila paper tied with twine. A note rested on the package, which had turned completely yellow. And on the note was written, D. Ayas Valley. Those photos can't be mine. I've never been to that place. In truth, I've never been to Alster Valley region at all. I don't know why, but discovering those photos filled me with unease. I brought them home, but I haven't found the courage to look at them yet. I woke up several times tonight. Each time I walked past the envelope containing the photos, convinced that I would open it. I always refrained from doing so. Headaches have returned, stronger than ever with those visions of trees. In the moments of most intense pain, I believe I even heard a voice, or perhaps it was whistling. I can't sleep anymore. Why, why haven't I found the courage to look at those photos?
it's weird that they have these blank places on the I don't know why but probably it's the place for those photos today I gave a terrible lecture for I was in a gloomy mood and my students took notice of it I often jabbered gibberish rather than teaching I became become aware of it but I wasn't able to get a firm grip of myself my thoughts were jumbled in my mouth. I don't know why, but I can't stop thinking about those photographs. During every single instant of the day, they say that I suddenly began to fix my gaze upon the of the co-ed ladies. Marco, my assistant, told me that I stood frozen like that for an entire minutes in complete silence. He said, I had an absent stare. What does that mean? Luckily, I pulled myself together and continued talking as if nothing had happened. I can't remember anything. It was like a kind of blackout in my co coherent stream of consciousness. Mother goddess, I have... I gave a lecture on this particular topic today. When I introduced the concept of Vesica Piscis, they all burst into laughter. One immediately pointed out that it looked like a vagina. I completed the, his observation explaining that he wasn't wrong. And in fact, it symbolized maternity in general, that, and that each one of us originates from there. I also explained that in the Middle Ages, the Vesica Piscis, also called Mandora, was used to frame holy pictures of God. Again, they burst out laughing. They still don't fully realize that attempts at removing sexuality from culture is quite a recent scourge. Then I told them about the trapo trapezoid, the three interlocked spirals, the three the crescent moons and other symbols that they seemed particularly interested. At the end of class, I handed out photocopies of the hymn to Isis and spoke about the role of women in ancient civilizations. Often, considerably different symbols encompass similar concepts. If it weren't for the headache, it would have been a perfect lesson. Heaven to Isis, because I am the first and the last. I am the venetrated and the despised one. I am the prostitute and the saint. I am the bride and the virgin. I am the mother and the daughter. I am my mother's arms. I am the sterile one, yet my children are numerous. I am the married woman and the unmarried one. I am she who gives birth, and she who has never given a birth. Given birth. I am the consolation for the pains of childbirth. I am the bride and the queen. And it was my man who nurtured my fertility. I am my father's mother. I am my husband's sister. And he is my rejected son. Respect me always, as I am the scandalous and the magnificent, the magnificent one. The photos, goddammit, I can't look at them. I simply collapsed. I couldn't even enter the classroom. I found myself lying on the ground, my head between my heads, with a swarm of students surrounding me and asking whether I was feeling well. The voices became noise, and then nothing. I woke up at hospital. According to the medical staff, it wasn't a heart attack, nor a stroke, nor a nervous breakdown. It was as, is as if I switched myself off. But without going into a coma, I've been admitted for three days. But all, uh, all the tests have lead nowhere. Ultimately, the doctors merely recommend that I rest a bit and prescribed me a more substantial diet than the one I had been following. The provost agreed 
with that and granted me five weeks off instead of the two recommended by my five spies in just in time for closure of the academic year my assistants will handle the examinator Timmy's the threes an old crone who talks with wolves then the woods then the wind two peaks a creek a building that looks like it was wedged into motionless world as an ancient earth itself the sun wraps around everything the clouds are walking across the valleys and the silence of time slips by in the immensity to which i abandoned myself everything fades away as the morning approaches i'm dominated by an inkling of vagueness I feel my body is growing heavy like a boulder. I didn't get any benefit from three days of absolute rest. And the photos are still wrapped up on the table. Marco visited me today. He reported on how things are going left back at the university. Sitting at the small table, I made the pretense of observing him and paying attention to what he was saying. I asked him if he wanted some coffee. He nodded and told me he would help himself. You should rest, he said, raising a smile, smirking. I've told you numerous times not to address me in such polite way, I replied, letting him to do letting him do so. A few minutes later he turned from the kitchen carrying a little tray with two coffee cups. He was so clumsy. He stumbled, spilling the steaming hot coffee on the package with the photos inside. Everything happened as quick as a flash. Regaining his balance and realizing what he has just done, he opened the envelope, envelope to remove the stained pages, allowing the liquid to pass through it. Without uttering a word, he handed me the photographs while he cleaned. As soon as I held them in my hands, I felt shivers run through my whole body, and that uneasy feeling that hasn't abandoned me during the past weeks turned into horror. The first image showed two mountains, with a choked voice whispered, Castor and Dollocks. Amazed that I recognized them, I began to cruise through the photos. After cleaning the mess, Marco came closer to gaze at those old photos with me. Why have some of them been torn? he asked. No clue, I replied in a huff, for no reason. I can't even recall having been in those places. Unfortunately, there was no doubt. Some of the torn photographs also featured me. There were shots of several locations. Darius. Champolux Dilas. When I was I there? Who was with me? Why were those photos ripped apart? Filled with questions, I long, no longer heeded Marco. So after a couple of minutes, he fabricated some quick excuse. I didn't even hear, so that he could take a uh, take leave. I flipped through the photos more and more fearingly as if they were a dream sequence on which I was seeking to make sense. Only after many hours I did I stand up from the chair to lay the photos on the table, and only then did I notice that one of the photographs had fallen to the ground underneath it. It must have fallen when Marco removed from the envelope to save them from the coffee. I picked it up took at it for a few seconds, and then fell upon the floor, limp as a corpse. The old sawmill. I had seen the photo appear to me in my dreams. I reached it, but I couldn't go nearer. I wasn't able to enter the surrounding fence, as if it were an invisible barrier. When I saw her, I was caught in a trance. Now, as then, she was on the doorstep, and her immense beauty illuminated the ornery walls in which 
I was imprisoned. She seemed sad and didn't talk to me. When I came around again, soaked in the morning sun, my doubts were gone. I must go to the Dias Valley, or better, should I say, return to. I will bring a few things with me, and this notebook, where I hope I'll be able to write how this crazy story ends. Anna, how could I forget you? Whoa, that was a lot of reading. I hope you didn't start to hate this game for it. But I really wanted to know what is that and to read it. So it appears that this guy, which I'm playing with, on on what oh, here, here, this character, let's say that, is a teacher, and he's given lectures of rape. <laughs> well, holy shit! So he found these photos of the mountains and such from his own. Stella? Was it Stella? I cannot remember. But he was in them, in some of them. So I guess this guy has already seen Anna. And we're here back because he wanted to. So we're helping him out. So let this journey begin by going inside of the house. I will see you in the next episode of Anna and I have to say next episode will be horrible I I really have to say this because it is it's it just is this game is not was it what it seems at the beginning it turns really bad because ha <laughs> I don't want to be here all the candles does someone live here Let's just read this. Obsessed by such purity, he stretched out his arm and cut himself with the heated blade. At last he had fulfilled the right. Only when he had seen his own blood pollute the limpid water, he realized he was drawing to the truth. In the next episode, we're gonna continue. Let's name this as that. Oh, Geekling. Nice. Now we have a save in here. Everything's cool. We know this place already. But look out! We have a fucking flashlight, and this is creeping me out so much. <laughs> but. Next time shit is going to hit the fan and I'll see you there. I'm really sorry this first episode was so boring because it was only me reading a bunch of stuff. I hope you are not mad at me because I wanted to read it. But yeah, I will see you there. Bye bye.